an open meeting. Okay, Phil? Okay, and um, just for the record, this meeting is being recorded. So, um, we need to start this meeting with our week 28 practice study. My name is Liz Oltman. I am the Director of Transportation Planning with TEC Engineering and um, we've been retained by the town to start looking into um, improvements along Route 28. And so I wanted to come and introduce myself and kind of introduce the project and because it seems like it's been a little while since North Reading has had a major transportation improvement project, maybe Route 62, 10 years ago or so. Um, so this is a, we're talking about a fairly substantial project from one end of town to the other along Route 28, complete evaluation of the entire corridor. And uh, let me just run through the quick steps of the planning and designing of a major transportation program like this. First we identify the project itself and the goals that we're trying to achieve by the, you know, of the project. At the same time we try and understand the schedule of the design and the permitting of the project. We develop the alternatives, we have a major public outreach campaign, and then we move into securing the funding, design, and hopefully then from there move into construction. So where we are right now is just the project identification phase. And that is where we s we're going to put out the brief public interest survey. Um, quick and dirty, not dirty, but quick, just to kind of get the feel from the town that 28 is where they want to spend their money. We've heard from staff that, from Danielle and John, that they have heard from the town that they, the town would like a more friendly feel along Route 28, safer for pedestrians, safer for vehicles, slow traffic down. So those are some goals that you know have been heard anecdotally, but what we would like to do is just kind of this first blush survey is is this what the town wants to do? Do they want sidewalks? Do they think it's a valuable um, expenditure of the town's money to put, move forward with design? Also, what we are doing at this point, oh, I wanted to talk a little bit about project schedule. Um, doing a project like this, the design and permitting will probably take 18 months to two years, and then during that time, we will try and position it for funding through the state, um, through the Transportation Improvement Program, the TIP. Those are typically five years out. So, um, you know, projects that if we, you know, put together a good concept and get some public approval in the next eight months or so, we're looking at construction probably in 2028, somewhere around there. Um, so you're also in a challenging MPO in the Boston region. Lots of money, but lots of competitors for that money. So you want to have a really good project that addresses pedestrians, bicyclists, um, addresses safety concerns um, of all roadway users. TEC has also been um, retained to start looking at those design alternatives. And what we are doing right now is in the data collection and evaluation phase, um, looking at what the right of way is, what, um, where their existing um, issues are, and um, coming up with several alternatives concepts for the entire corridor. Those we again will bring to the public in a more formal type of feedback um, program, you know, maybe some public meetings, as many as we need to do to kind of get some buy-in, and then we will move on to the design of the 25, 50, you know, 75 PSME design phases and securing the funding. Um, so 
I just wanted to kind of let you know, I know there were some questions on the survey about why it wasn't very detailed, but that's where we are right now is just in the um, identification phase. And so I'm happy to work with you on this. If you have specific questions reworded or um, wanted to add anything, but we're really just looking for a first blush from the town um, population at this point. Okay, um, I know we got some questions about the survey, so I kind of things there, but I, I have a kind of a basic question for you. Um, if we decide, if we decided through this process that we wanted to decrease the speed limit on Route 28 as to where it goes through the town, the DOT considers that to be a connector road between Reading and Amber along this, and they set the speed limit. Uh, how, how successful are you, are you normally in a situation like that and getting them to reduce that? Well, that's a kind of a different question. Um, the state sets has a specific procedure for setting speed limits, and right now it is um, based on the 85th percentile speed, which is where 85% of the people are going at or below. So people are probably going between 40 and 45 miles an hour on some stretches of 28 in town um, on average. So um, from that standpoint, um, they are not going to just lower the speed limit. However, if we come forward with a campaign of pedestrians, bicycles, the road diet may be like they <coughs> did in North Red in Reading. Um, the three-lane section instead of a four-lane section, we might be able to convince MassDOT that we need to design for a lower speed limit. And then um, then they would come back in after it was designed and lower the speed limit. Now that's my, my fear of the whole thing because I, I've heard of there is a reading in the planning magazine about the places where they tried it and then the state refused to let them lower the speed limit. And so, uh, Traffic calming measures are end, end up like a, like a uh, roundabout or something like that. End up becoming the only way to get some control over it. Right. So we would look. Um, what they did in what the state did in Reading was narrow the travel lane and you know brought out those shoulders, made it more comfortable for people on the road that were not vehicles. I don't know. I have not seen any results from that yet. If it has succeeded in slowing any traffic in that area um, so uh, but that's what we would attempt to do in one of the scenarios and another scenario would just be providing for bicycles and pedestrians outside of the travel lanes uh, but there are a lot of commercial businesses along that area so you have to be a little careful. so on, on, um, on Haber Street um, they when they put they put bicycle lanes in on a certain section of it going into Reading or in Reading and they ultimately lowered the speed limit by five miles an hour then. So but I don't think that's DOT, that's that's a local road, so I imagine they have the authority to do that without having to consult anybody. No, actually all all posted speed limits have to go through the state. Yeah. They warned, didn't they? They they the town did it and then they said they notified the state, the state said no. Well, they loaded back. the third hill. Yeah, they said, and then out. the state came back. And, and no, the state came back and it's going to go back to the original speed, and they covered up all that thirty mile an hour speed signs. Well, it was 40 yeah. before. Yeah. Right, they brought it back to forty, and now it's now it, they went through the state and did it the right way, and the state gave them thirty five. Oh yeah. yeah, well that's good. You know, the yeah, now, so it's, now it's close to thirty five. Yeah, so my my concern there is that with the speed limit that's. That, that a speed limit of 40 miles an hour out there on 28, you know, interacting <coughs> with bicycles and things on, you know, could get to be a tenuous situation. So mm -hmm. having a bicycle lane next to cars going 40 miles an hour. Right. Well, we would have to design the roadway. MassDOT has specifications for designing for 40 mile an hour roadways. It's also over 10,000 vehicles a day on Route 28. So that's another step um, so the bicycle facilities either have to be buffered so there has to be striping between the vehicles and the bike lane or they have to be physically separated on um, on a curb in a shared use path okay so i know some of the board members have questions about the survey what 
I, I had one. This this survey I look at that I saw at the monkey. Survey monkey. The survey monkey. That's not the same one we saw last week, is it? Daniel? Uh, yeah. It looks like there's less questions in it this week than two weeks ago. And it's no. only there there are three questions. One of the big things we had was that it was really heavy on bicycles. More than walking. And it's like when you go and look around, I mean, the people who are riding bikes are doing it for more exercise. They're not going from point A to a store. Mm -hmm. They're going from point A back to point A, mm -hmm. or some go to work, and but you know they go a long distance, and it just didn't seem like it made a lot of sense. We've done we've had surveys done before, and <coughs> the results of the survey is just. I, I thought they were more confusing and really helped what we were looking for. Okay. I, I, this, uh, maybe the way it's worded or something, it, it's much, I read it again and it was much better. Um, <coughs> the one confusing one was when we're asking what's your, what the, what about the importance? The uh, three transportation. Yeah, the three transportation things. Eight. It's all in one. It's kind of like. Yeah. You know that 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 one, it it was kind of. Uh, I thought I I it was just kind of difficult to understand okay. what what you were going to use to get out of you know what you were going to get out of that, and that's almost one that you could maybe make more than one question. I think that's the one. Yeah, number four. I think that what we were trying to get out of there is just how people, what their current vision of Route 28 is. Is it, um, is it just a place for people to get from point A to point B, or do we? I mean, I can reword it because I, I maybe that well, maybe that's you know what is your vision? What do you want Route 28 right. to be? I could just see people looking at that and saying, "Well, I'd like to put this, but I want to put this in this." You know, it, it is not enough. Okay. There's, it, there's. I don't want to get too much information, but that question is so broad. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're going to get the information you really need. Right. Okay. I will reword that question to make it more like, what would you like Route 28 to be? Yeah. But I, you know, I, I, know, I, I do not having. I understand the issue with the, having bicycles and bicycle access and things, right. um, but being really heavy on that was was I thought was an issue, and I think it's I think it's backed off a little bit. I think um, in order to get any kind of federal or state funding, you have to provide for both bicycles and pedestrians on the roadway. Oh, definitely pedestrians. Mm -hmm. You know and. <coughs> I don't, I'm not. I don't have a problem with bicycles. Mm -hmm. It's how do we do it? Do it right. Right. It's still, you know. I think I think part of Chris's point here is that there are places where uh, where bicycles are are a form are a form, actual form of transportation, and there are places, and I think what Chris is pointing out here, where they're just a form of enjoyment. Uh -huh. And so you really, so when you're designing for it. Uh, for transportation, you're designed to allow as many people as possible to get to work and back or do, do, do their traveling without having to um, without having to use a car. And when you do it in a town like this, it's you know, you, you know the money spent doesn't decrease the level of transportation that we have. Mm -hmm. And so I think it is not a win there. I mean, is that really what you're yeah. yeah, that and I, I thought there was also something here about public transportation. I don't think we're ever going to get good public transportation no. this town because we used to pay into it and had none. The bus went right down Main Street and they never stopped. Mm -hmm. Now they mm -hmm. go around us totally. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Th I don't remember having anything. I don't. I don't there, think there really is anything correct. in there. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so I, it's 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 yeah, it is something that we you know have to work with MassDOT on because it you know they have the they have. Um, their standards and that has to they apply that unilaterally across the state. So basically what you're saying is we have to leave the bicycle stuff in there because that's going to be a requirement or, or, or a commitment just to, to 
providing that kind of transportation area is going to be part of our, our approval. Right. <clears throat> Even though we realize right up front that it's strictly almost, not, not totally, but almost strictly uh, <coughs> uh, a um, recreational situation. Right, and the people that would use a 40 mile an hour road to bicycle on are usually more experienced bicyclists. Um, you're not going to put bicycle lanes on Route 28 and um, the high school kids will use that. Or have some you know, so, on a three or five four. <laughs> right, so you want them wheels. somewhere else, but. Yeah. Um, so this is, that's what we would have to look at is um, those options on how we can provide for everybody um, and keep everybody safe. Okay, you have yeah, um, Lynn, thanks for coming out. Um, so you mentioned, uh, just to piggyback on the chair's comment, ha do you have any examples of where you've been successful getting that past the state with speed limit reductions for projects? Um, speed limit reductions. Uh, we are in the process of a couple of corridor studies that we're trying to to do that with um, one out in Harvard. Um, I just lost where the other one was. Um, but I we have been successful in evaluating the safety of a corridor and petitioning the state to lower the speed limit um, based on the uh, character of the roadway and you know. I think we know the 85th percentile speed. I just don't remember it off the top of my head. We did a couple of ATR counts, um, mm -hmm. the automatic counts that record the speed. And I'm sorry, I don't have that. But it sounds like it's a, a challenge unless yeah. you do it the ready way. Well, you know, you know, well, you know, I would, I would think, um, you know, because it, this, this was, we're looking at developing some kind of a town center kind of thing out there. That if we actually did that, if we actually got that accomplished. That would be a good reason for them to slow that speed limit down. You could almost, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I agree. By, by, by creating an area where people will congregate and, right. and causing them to allow us to lower the speed limit. But other than that, that was why that was my first question because I read about that going down the road and they just, it's not very, the success is limited. <laughs> success is if, limited. If uh, I, I have heard rumblings that they're trying to be more context sensitive um, and think about the design speed. Whether that's gone to everybody, you know, every reviewer in every district, we'll see. Yeah, I think that uh, because they, I, I think it's going to be a, a, a rough go because um, I know that the DOT from many years ago dealing with them on different things that we tried to do, um, I know they consider that to be a connector road. They don't consider that to be a, ta a downtown road yeah. or a town square road or any of those things. So without having some kind of a designation such as that, they're not going to hear it. They're just going to, they're going to, because it's a connector road right. connecting those two places I mean, where they go. <coughs> I think this though, they have town centers. This though, Mr. Chairman, this needs to run kind of in parallel with the development that we want to do on 28 and make it more yep. friendly and dense. And so again, with the durations it takes to, to engineer it, to get it through, I mean, we have to start this process. So, yeah. and it just needs to be symbiotic with what we're doing on yeah. the development side with Winter Street 28, yeah, all that. Well, my, my, my concern is that if we don't have, if for some reason the marketplace doesn't accommodate that that development, that um, we could go through this whole redesign thing and end up with just exactly what we still have. Yeah. Well, the goal would be to make it safer and more efficient for all the roadway users, whether, you know, whether the design speed is 40 or 35, um, we have to design it for right now for the 40 mile an hour road right. to make it as safe as possible. So there's no downside to doing this project um, because it will improve the signals. It, it will put sidewalks on the road at a minimum. So um, I mean, it's no, there's no downside to starting this process. Okay. So I guess. Um, just a just a quick question about an overview. The, the, um, what your what your company is going to do is is, re is going to evaluate Route 28 and then come up with some suggestions on how to make it more friendly, if you will. And even though the speed limit changes might not be in the in the cards, um, 
you know, basically going to recommend things like uh, sidewalks and bike lanes and all those things. And, and um, so you would really, you really would like this um, survey to come out somewhat in favor of bike lanes because that, because ultimately the goal of what you're going to produce is to get the state to give us money to fix it. Um, but if the if if 95% of the town says there's no reason to put bike lanes on this road, we can possibly try and use that to our benefit to just steering the state to the design that the town is most in favor of. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Like, they, um, they are, they do listen to people. Yeah. Uh, they do listen to the municipalities. So the more public outreach that we have and starting with this, you know, just kind of general survey um, helps because then we can say, all right, we heard this from the town you know this is the data that we have and this is um, our concepts and then we went back to the town and showed them our concepts and everybody liked this one which incorporates X Y and Z and then um, and then we kind of move on with that from there with the state yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I think things like sidewalks and, and those kind of things are going to are, are going to be uh, well received I think you're going to get a lot of positive feedback on those um, and, and perhaps even if you think about it, the three lane thing with a turn lane, I think that's the best thing. Might be good because I mean I drive around kind of a lot and uh, and uh, I go to the gas station out here. And many times coming out of that gas station and there's not a car coming either way. I can pull right out. And and uh, you know I, and a lot of different times, a lot of different times a day. So there's uh, there's I think there's some very there's very small amount of traffic punching, even though right now um, we are sort of in a recovery phase. But it seems like when you go to the highways, there's more traffic than there ever was. Yeah. So um, so you would think that would translate to a similar situation here, but it doesn't seem to have. Mm -hmm. So, um, Pretty light, yeah. I so anybody, good job on your head, please. Yeah, I think it's your um, When I read this, I think it's almost like a um, uh, self-fulfilling kind of survey in the sense that it doesn't capture the, um, a vision that people would have any like imagination of how these things would improve their lives. Like not having it tied into the, the, the plans uh, from Main Street. Like I think that a lot of people just look at this and go like, none of this would improve my life right now because of the status quo. Like whereas if it somehow incorporates, imagine a world where mm -hmm. would you find these things valuable? Um, I think would in encourage people to have a forward thinking imagination of how their life would be different. Because if it's just a status quo, what we have right now, it would be like, why bother? Um, I mean, I don't know how we, how you do that, but. Okay. Yeah, it's a big, wide street. You know, just I was taking more note of it this weekend. It's four lanes, and there's sidewalks for a, a great portion yeah. of it. They are minimum five feet. Um, so they're pretty broad already. And so you're thinking to yourself, what can we do? So. I, I like you. I do like the three-lane center turn. Mm -hmm. um, I think that does slow things down. It does uh, makes things easier. And I then the it opportunity easier because you're driving in two lanes. The guy three cars in front of you decides he's going to make a left-hand turn. What's he do? He stops in that travel lane. You're right. And everybody's got to go around him. I agree. If you if you had that third lane, you could pull into that third lane, and. You know you're making that left hand right. turn. Now people just continue on the same road they run. Right. If you make it a right hand turn, you slow down and make that right hand turn. Mm -hmm. So there's the challenge. That now you have 12, 15 more feet to work with for a bike lane, more sidewalk, yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. But as Lynn said, one of the challenges along 28, at least where it's dense, is you have so many curb cuts that it's very dangerous, at least on that side you pick. We're going to put the bike lane on the right side, whatever mm -hmm. side it's on. Yeah, you know, tough you're cruising you're along, you're yeah. like at 30 miles per hour and there's all cars these turns, in, it's just yeah. very dangerous. Cars coming in, going out, yeah. But where it opens up, you know, hey, you know, it might make a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, I don't know some of the strategies, you know, where you create all yeah, the like, south side. On the south side has fewer curb cuts, the south does. side. And yeah, I mean, and that's what I'm sure of, the survey. A couple of nice long properties where you could, where you could run on yeah, for a period of time. So. I don't ride my bike anymore in the city. It's too dang dangerous. <laughs> you don't want to do it. Oh, well, you know. Even with all, all right. the bike lanes? It, well, this is before bike lanes, oh. but. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, uh, any other comments or questions? To the chair? 
Yes, please. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, Rich Walnut. Um, uh, so, what you were saying was really interesting because there has been studies done, we've done studies, Streetscape, things like that, where there was some imagination that was done on what our main street could look like. And if you, if you do go out with a survey that it says, what do you want to do with our current street? You know, no one's going to imagine that. So, there is an effort. I mean, <coughs> unlike, so you have Andover has a small point downtown. Reading has probably the next point downtown. We actually have the ability, what we're thinking about, the ability of creating a downtown for itself. And I think the state will find that very compelling because it's going to be around economic development. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a life, life, uh, lifestyle type of development. So if people don't know that, they won't be able to comment about slowing traffic down, even in that particular area, just like any downtown we have. So it's single lane up in Andover, and I think it's double, but really tight lanes and revenue. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't have that. We have a highway. You know, and people can't even imagine. I mean, we're Route 1, right? And that's what we are, Route 1. So people can't even imagine without us somehow bringing it out that we're thinking of doing some development in that area. And so I, somehow the survey should reflect that possibility because then people could think about it. So rich survey as in show examples, you know, I, I, of, I, I, you know, know me being more visual. And that, that's what I think we were saying to Danielle the last <coughs> time, is, uh, you know, and, and admittedly, Lynn, you know, not meeting you or anything. I was, I was criticizing. Like, I, I want the effort to show more. Give me sections of what the, these are. Five different sections, cross sections of the road, from sidewalk to sidewalk, or right away to right away. What these possibilities are. I mean, with greenery and all the things, like buff them out. And because I think that's what people need to see is the possibilities. If yeah. they're just, as Jeremiah said, as Rich said, if they're just answering the survey, what would you like to see? <laughs> Bike lane and. It's just not going to be, and, it's not inspiring. It won't be and it's that, not inspiring. Yeah. Right. And that is the next phase. I mean, we don't have to do this phase. I just, I was, what I really was interested in was if people liked what they did in Red, in Reading, yeah. that three lane section. So maybe, you know, that's kind of where this is geared, <laughs> probably a little geared to that. Like, I, I want to know if people think that that's something that would work in North Reading. Um, so maybe let me look at this again. And um, even if it's showing little vignettes of other projects that have the three lanes. So in that question about traffic, you're showing examples of the three lane, or I don't know, just trying to get more yeah. people. Sometimes are more visual. Um, I can so try I can, and um, with little work. I mean, it's like. I'm not asking for the survey to create all these drawings, but right. using little images that conjure up thoughts of this is what it could look like. Would be. And, and I think the, the writing, what's on the ground and writing, really isn't, hasn't been on the ground and writing. Because they, they're, they're putting their final, finally putting their wear coat on. The road's all torn up again because they weren't able to finish it. They rushed it too fast. Oh. They they were able. I think they finished the road fairly well from the track with railroad tracks south, but from the railroad tracks north, they've just been working at all all spring. They've been they've been pulling all the manholes off, and it's oh. roads a mess again. They painted a lot of it on the ground, but they didn't do anything else. They didn't do other other ways to, to, to move the traffic. They painted it. Yeah. Which is it's okay, but it's just, you know. Right. I guess the last downward. time I went through there was just paint on yeah. the road. I didn't realize right. they were it's going they back to re yeah, they're doing the some other thing. stuff. I don't know I, I don't know what they're gonna do, but um, it may not be more than paint or yeah. they may, you know, just they may bring some uh right. some thermal yeah, so things that are the so they, or makes noise and stuff like that. I, I understood it was a, a pilot project too. They so that's probably why they didn't do much more than paint the first time. Because yeah. if it didn't work, then paint is easy to eradicate and repaint as four lanes. So Well the other problem is this training too. Mm -hmm. The rotaries can work well, like the one twenty nine rotary, I'm sure you've been around that one twenty nine rotary. If people read the signs and actually did what they were told, they could get around that rotary a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, I learned how to use that rotary, that style of rotary, when I went to Ireland. <laughs> you rent the car and they hand you a pamphlet on how to use their roundabouts. 
Same thing with one, 114 in, in Middleton, right? Where you've got the center turn lane. Right. You, you, all you have to do is get across one lane of traffic, go to the center turn lane, then you can join the lane of traffic you're going to merge to. People don't know how to use that. Right. Because they've never been taught how to use it. And the state has been going um, towards roundabouts. We, we will look at that, but um, there's some limited right of way. Um, and there's a, um, buildings pretty close. Probably if there was a redevelopment area that was going to happen, you would look at that. Um, but some, if some of the, you'll, if you go down and look around, roundabouts are, spar are smaller, but when you have um, limited right of way, they're a little tricky to put in. A little tricky to put in. Okay, any other comments or questions? Okay, thank you very much for coming and sure. explaining thank some you. of that and hopefully we gave you some input. Yes, I appreciate <coughs> you I appreciate your um, having me and yeah. uh, letting me um, talk and pick your brain a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, we, so we, we're serious about it. We want we yeah, want we something want, good we, to happen. So Yeah. Yep. So, so we let don't me help and we don't mind yeah. picking our brain. Yeah. So I will um, go back and I'll adjust a couple of those questions and I'll send it over to you sometime next week okay. or so. Thank you. Sure. All right. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Well, actually, Jerry's here for our. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Good night. Good night. Thank you. He's here for our zoning sessions regarding. Just for discussion every purposes, yeah. I guess. Okay. <laughs> Just in case anybody has any questions. Okay. If you see us swatting, we're just trying to get a fly. <laughs> we're not waving. <laughs> Ryan and I are being attacked by a lot. I have to run out to get my electronic devices because I left them home. Went home for so long since I've had to have them, you know. I'm going to the adult. Well, Terry was kind of left to join us tonight because I have a few items that I need to get done and talked about doing workshop discussions on, and they're all zoning related. Well, I've done a little research into that too. But, um, so let's uh, jump right into accessory dwelling units. Uh, I didn't quite hear you. You said it again? <laughs> <laughs> I honestly did it. Hey. hey, I'm getting old. Accessory hey. dwelling unit, ADU. That, that comes to your defense sometimes. It's good. <laughs> yeah, because ADU, we've been, talking about, we've been talking about ADUs for a while, trying to figure out what to do about them. And, and um, about those for 15 years. Yeah, I know, but, but um, you know, the, the, it has all the obvious issues. And that is, if you try to do it someplace in a million dollar neighbor, neighborhood or whatever you want to call it, you know, they think that it devalues their property, and and then there's how do you control who's in there, and when does it become a rental as opposed to a family, and so forth and so on. Well, we're finding a lot of full-blown kitchens being put in, yeah. and I I can't stop um, because the state of Massachusetts building code says you have to allow, have to allow it. So on the Mass Massachusetts General Law 143, I don't have a choice. So I have to allow it. So I've tried to find ways of maybe eliminating stoves. I think uh, Dave, you and I. Yeah, we talked about that once. Yeah. And we did come to, uh, I should say, blows with one particular person. We kept going back and forth, and no matter what I did, I just couldn't seem to stop these people from putting in the stoves. So I went to the state. The state says that you can't do it. You've got to do something within your zoning bylaws that shows a description, um, that shows a definition of what a stove is or what a kitchen is. So I reached out to um, one of our communities, and they do have that description. But I said, how, how does it work? He said, some of the people, it works for them. And others, it does not. They fight it, and they win. So. Danielle and I were talking earlier, and would it be best to have allow certain square footages for people to put in second kitchens, 700 square feet, 900 square feet? Um, it's, a, it's a sticky wicket. It's I, I, just I, I, it's just conversational purposes only. Yeah, no, yeah. no, it, no it, that's it, all it is. 
you know, it, it doesn't mean that that's what we should have and that's what no, we should no, do. No, 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 I'm just, um, it's the number you threw out, that's what, that's, it was like, that's bigger than my kitchen. <laughs> well, no, 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 yeah. no, no, that's no, no. a second, that's a second it, He means the dwelling itself. The, no. Yeah, the, yeah. That, that whole area, because when they put these kitchens in, they're putting a small living room in. They're putting a bathroom in. Well, if you're incorporating a bathroom, a living room, and a kitchen, and then you, you say this is an office, you and I both know it's a bedroom. Yeah. So if you say, okay, we're going to limit this, your second kitchen, and all the amenities with it to seven or 900 square feet, that's what I know the town of Drake does. So... Yeah, 900 square feet where a kitchen is big. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's all I took. I was thinking no, of no, space, no. Yeah. Space, yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I misspoke on that. <coughs> Lately, I've seen, I've read from a couple of applications where <coughs> they, um, real estate stuff, where they are encouraging people to put in accessory ground units. And with examples of the person who put one in and started renting it out, making money, so put another one in, started making more money, and they enough money to cover their whole mortgage, you know. So, I mean, they're encouraging people to do it. They, they hear things like that and they say, well, maybe we should do it. But I think that the answer here um, is, uh, is, is a, a bylaw where um, that allows them with whatever restrictions we put on so that you won't, you won't be fighting the stove uh, deal. You'll be just making sure that they meet the requirements of the bylaw. What do you think about that? It works for me. My my position is I, I just want to protect the town. Yeah. That's that's my job. My job is to make sure that the people that are going to be in this town are going to live here and live peacefully. That you know right. you're living in a town. You're not living in a city. And you want to be you don't want to be encroached by everybody. Right. So uh, in the encroachment I'm I'm seeing is, is starting to happen with with all these additional kitchens being put in. I'm seeing uh, instead of seeing two cars at this property, I'm seeing three and four. Right. Um, and it's going to tax the infrastructure. Yeah. yeah. Jerry, what would you say are the numbers? You, you know your permits. I remember watching your presentation, you know, how many permits and how much they went up. But based on how many permits, how many are, for lack of a better way to put it, are really ADUs, you know, and without names, all that. But how many of them are, you know, these instances that you're running into? I'd say about 20 to 25. A year, kind of, since you've been here. Uh, I wouldn't say a year. I say, but since I've been here, about twenty to twenty-five. Okay. Um, and are they pretty much across the board as far as the different districts? They're they're correct. Like they yes. RAs, RBs, all yes. re all resi, or any business? No, no business. All resi. But I um, <clears throat> I approached the state. And I asked the state, what are the what are other communities doing relative to this? They told me they have deed restrictions. Yeah. So I, st I basically went out, went out on the limb, I asked the state, can you give me a copy or a sample of a deed restriction? So I took that copy, took that sample, sent it to, sent it to uh, our legal counsel. Our legal counsel K came B. back. K B. Yeah. yeah, and they, they came back and it was so restrictive. People were looking at this and they were like, we're not signing this. I was having attorney after attorney after attorney following me saying, I'm not going to have these people sign this. We're just going to put these kitchens in. Is that correct? Well, yeah, Le technically you are correct. So what I did is I took that deed restriction and I took out a lot of the language that KP law put in, sent it back to the state, talked to a couple of the state officials, and I was able to draft something that, came, that, I, um, that we came up with that's pretty close to what a lot of the other communities are, are doing, such as Middleton. Um, and people are actually signing this deed restriction and they're attaching it to their deed. So they're recording it, and I wait for it to be recorded, then we issue the permit. What's so what in the deed restriction? And what is the restriction? The restriction is basically saying, it's a covenant saying that you are maintaining this as a single family, and you are not taking this, and you're not renting any of these rooms out, you're not renting the kitchen out, you're not, you're not turning this into an in-law, basically an in-law unit. Um, so it doesn't become rental. And there's a 99-year covenant on this deed restriction. And I'm not having any, uh, right now, I'm not having any people push back on it. I think we were, I think when we were talking about it, we were looking at, um, you know, going a, going a little further, and that is actually creating, I don't know, an overlay district or a zone or perhaps just a bylaw that would allow someone to have an ADU and um, as an in-law. I mean, 
that works. I mean, if that's if that's what the town wants to do, I don't have an issue with that. But I, what people are doing I, is they're just taking it upon themselves to do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I just think it's wrong. We um, have some that are legal in the town, though. That is, we have four of them that are legal. Yeah, there was a period of time when the bylaws did not get <laughs> renewed, and during that time, some of them went in, yep. and then they said, oh, we missed this, and when we renewed the bylaws, and so then they renewed the bylaws again and zoned them out again. But for that period of time, there were a number of legal ones that were, uh, that were put in. The problem is, though, is both chiefs have confirmed they do not know where any of these ADUs are, whether they're the ones that are right or ones that are... You know, yeah. Well, so, I, so I think that's why by so time, that's a problem. So that's why <laughs> I think I was thought I was leaning towards creating a bylaw of some kind, because you know if you can create a bylaw and, and create enough to and not get enough protection in it, I don't know if somebody else has one. It sounds like they might be a little hard to come by, but but um, at least if you made it possible for them to do it legitimately, they would then let you know. So you would so that the police and the fire would know. You know that there's that no, this is there's, there's another unit. If this house on fire, don't just look in the main house. There's an ADU here. You need to look at it as well. So um, because they wouldn't be afraid to tell you because correct, they, they, yeah, they're with afraid now. The law. Well, all the yeah, they're afraid. Um, Some are. Not well, everybody. they are. But the thing is, is and this now ties into the accessory structures because we have we have detached accessory structures that have their they're putting kitchens, bathrooms, and I'm telling them, no, rip it up. You can't have a kitchen in there. Um, take it out. And they're, they're basically arguing with me, saying, no, 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 we're not. So it's... It's the learned accessory structure where you put a kitchen. You should be living. Correct. And what started all this is, is there's a property on Spruce Street, and it went through the Zoning Board of Appeals. And Zoning Board of Appeals said, yes, you can have this particular garage. And then the gentleman decided to put what he called um, bonus rooms within this garage. Well, this bonus room turned into pretty much a second house. And I've been on top of him maybe two seconds. Uh, I've, uh, I've held his feet to the fire relative to the building code. Um, and just to give you an idea how much I've held his feet to the fire, it's been two years he's been building this. That's how... But Jerry, so did he, because I have more examples of the same, I think, unless you confirm, but they first went, got the zoning, um, you know, got through zoning on a, um, call it a, a setback issue or whatever, Correct. right? And then, right when he, was it already built or it was built? Oh no, it wasn't, it was, at that point, I, wait a minute, at that point in time it was partially built. So. What did he need the and variance I just, for? I just came on board at the time. What did he need the variance for, though? He needed the variance for the setbacks. For his, and yet it was already built? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, but that's what I'm seeing, and, and if there's anything... And then I caught him on the height. I right. caught him on the height as well. I told him that it was, it was too tall. It was, uh, it was 20, 27 feet in height. So, so here's the thing that I've seen in town is the... And this is a sly thing that somehow that this town this board and somebody needs to put teeth into it whether or not we do an ordinance or not is the end around that people are doing where they go to the zba to to, to build a detached i'm building a garage and then they get to use i'm building a shed whatever it is they get that shed in and then almost midway they're, they're so cocky about it they won't even wait till it's done they'll come to jerry you know after framing and say yeah you know i changed my mind i'm going to make this a bonus room and i'm going to put this this and this in it they've already gone through zba they had the neighbors maybe one just said yeah joe's okay he can build a garage <laughs> yeah <laughs> and the then garage. the next thing you know he got through zba so he's got through the big hoop she whatever and then they come and they go through in front of jerry now now want to build the bonus room and it's kind of a sneaky way of you know, getting a detached property. Now, I'm not as adverse. I, I'm, I'm not opposed to um, the attached apartment. You know, within the within the, the yeah, very much. You know, supportive of that. But it's the detached that really we need some teeth in because that's that's what people are doing. You know, and I I, I can on this you that, know privately I biggest, can give examples. Oh yeah, that's the biggest issue. Right? What he just said is is currently happening. 
two different properties currently. Yeah, and, and I can exactly, name exactly up there, these were two years ago. I can name three. So that the, went isn't there the plumbing ZBA, code issues you know, uh, as well? That they, you know, how do they get around all those? They, they have every right to put plumbing in there. They have every right to put electrical in there. Yeah. They have every so every right to do that. I can't except stop. Except that if they have a septic system, which everybody in North Reading does pretty much, that means that they they're adding a room. They're adding no. Clothes. It's triggered by bedroom now. So I, I uh, understand that completely. But so they're not telling Jerry it's a bedroom, so that it doesn't trigger it, right? Or does it? Not? Well, you, you can also. It's also triggered by. It can be triggered Fixture? by square footage. Tr also. Tr tr trigger, tr it's also triggered by the amount of rooms. Yeah. yeah, the amount of rooms in general. So you can get them on that, maybe. Yeah. So get I mean, the, the, there are town. I know there are towns that if you just increase <coughs> the square footage, um, you have to have a review of it and, and to see if there's going to be impact on the system. And so, and, and so that seems to help with the problem, because you know if they're going to increase, as soon as they come in and ask for a building permit for anything, there has to be a review of of what the square footage is and, and maybe an inspection or whatever, and then proof that this is not going to impact the septic system. Because it sounds to me like if you have a three bedroom home and you put a garage over here and then you put a living unit in it with plumbing, that was my that was the base of the question. Now you've got to hook up to this but now you're overtaxing that system and the Board of Health would have the ability to that is correct. The plug. That's correct. But we have uh you have to remember we we're supposed to only have one primary structure on the property. Right. One right. primary. Right. And, yeah, and people are, are starting to use them as two primaries. We have one right here on Lowell, Lowell Road. And I know exactly where it is, and they basically uh, built it. I told them uh, it's got to come out. They got a hold of that contractor. I know they did it nights and weekends. I can't see it. Yeah. But I know, I, I know exactly what happened. Do I have the right to go in there? Yeah, if I if I get a search warrant, but how well, the, you know, well, administrative that's what I warrant? Think the board of health might have the right to go in there. Excuse me. The board of health might have the right to go in there and evaluate it. Yeah. But either way, that most people are just doing it I mean, after I, the I, fact. We're, we're talking about all these different ways of, of, of solving, catching people are doing something, you know. But I still think that the best course of action is is a bylaw. That's perfect. Reason being is because we just don't have the manpower to yeah. enforce. To run around it has, and, and a, has multiple advantages. It, first of all, it, it dictates the way it will be used, and it, and, it, and, it, um, and it lets the police and fire know how many people are in there, and then you have an accurate, something accurate. It also helps, and, and another way it helps is, is there's a value to it. And so that increases the value of the property, which increases the tax base. So, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of value to be had by doing a bylaw that gives us uh, some kind of uh, control over what's happening. So um, I do think. The, do the does the town want it though? Well, you know the problem comes from you'd have you probably have to take the town meeting, and the question would be you'd have to sell it because I think a f number of years ago you would have had a much more difficult time selling it than you do would right now. Because I, I that. think that ma the majority of our, our of our good spaces are built out, and those houses, most of those big monster houses, they've already got one. So they'd love to see it be, they'd love to True. see it be legal. Well, yeah, they can oh, get yeah, out and say, really oh, by the way, I have one, but it's legal now, you know. Yeah. There's a number of things that when it became legal, was everybody thought it was better. So that, there's a, um, so there's a value to it right down the line, because it's, they'll admit to it, you can tax it, you know, I mean, I mean it's just, it's, so I think that, that I, you know, I know you're looking for, to put some teeth into a bylaw that you already have, uh, we'll support you on that if that's the way you want to go. Um, but I think we need to look real hard at a, at a bylaw and get it to town meeting and sort of, as they say, run it up the flagpole and see who salutes. Mr. Chairman, I think one of the things, I think the, the roadmaps there, if we want to use it, is Reddings. If you look at Reddings, chapter Yeah, somebody five, else told me that too. It's got pretty much everything in it. The only thing it doesn't have in it is the item I mentioned about the end around. Because again, you know they're specific in their detached um, requirements as far as dimensionally, size-wise. It can't be more than a thousand square feet or one third, the lesser one third of the structure. So if it's twenty-five hundred square feet, you know you can only be one third of that. You can't right. even be the one thousand. So um, that gives you some 
proportionality, I think, which is really important because yeah, yeah, you don't have that McMansion yeah. behind the primary residence. <laughs> yeah. Um, it also doesn't allow you to be forward of the no build zone, which is the front face of the building. Um, there's some setback requirements. There's a lot of dimensional um, graphics and stuff, and I suggest everybody go to go to it. It's section five in the, in their, uh, yeah. their 2018. Excuse me. What do you think Have of you that looked idea? at it, Jerry? Because it's it pretty. Right? I've seen it. Yes. Yeah, it's pretty comprehensive, and if we can make it better um, to plug any holes, I think that's what we can do. But it still Anything? gets it still gets down to whether people. I, I mean, you can write out a perfect zoning bylaw and improve on readings, but you know, if you're a person that's living right now and, and you chose to live in North Reading on a one-acre lot with your home and you weren't really buying into this whole thing and your next door neighbor, both neighbors on each side of you start building a detached, you know, fun house, if you will, with renters and all that. I mean, it is a quality of life element that's just as important as the fire and safety and the trash, the assessors, the septic. It, it's just, yeah, I, I'm sensitive so, to that. So a lot, of, say, the, a lot of these, the thing is, I think a lot of these newer subdivisions have covenants on them. Um, that run to the east, right? So private covenants, you mean from yeah. the developers? Yeah. I think they do, but the so so. The, but the that. problem with that is that <coughs> most every one of them has an in-law of some kind, <laughs> and so, so they just they don't care. Well, no, I, I think that making it possible for somebody to admit to it and make it legal is probably um, uh, would, would help a lot, and it would give us the opportunity, as I said, to to uh, know Registering. what's going on. Yeah, Most through. towns have an amnesty once they initiate the program yeah, until yeah. one year yeah. or whatever. But do you want to look at it from that perspective or do you want, or do you want to continue? To no, that's fine. It? I just want to make sure that we have something etched in stone because it, everything is just too... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wishy washy for you. Well, in the meantime... <laughs> yeah, for a lack of a better term. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, it's all right, Jerry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, the one thing is everything in, North, in, in Reading, if you look at it, there's only one um, you know, in the table, one that's a yes. It's all special permit. Yeah. So whether it's in the in the yes is one in the dwelling where mm -hmm. there's no addition, that's the yes. That's by right, if you will. Right, yeah. You can as long as you pass, you know, with the building inspector, have everything up to snuff. But yeah. um, the rest of it is special permit. Right. So and I I like that because I think it should go through a group of people that are looking yeah. at it, taking into account the neighbors. But um, the question like would be, ZBA, you know? yeah, but the question would be, so you have a public hearing, you have a, it's a special permit, so there's a public hearing and the neighbors come in and they don't want it. Do you think it's always that black and white? I think it's this, they're trying to put it right 10 feet away from my house and this and that. I think that's where you have to have work out. That's the, why we're here to help meet You're going to have to work with the Board of Appeals to yeah. tell them, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And just try to figure out a way to do it. I mean, that's how I would approach it. I wouldn't be there yes or no. It's more just to try to help. And the other thing is going to be parking. That's the other thing, just like you said. That's the biggest issue right now. <coughs> no, that's, what, that's what we're seeing. Especially in these older communities, you know, older uh, subdivisions in Swan Pine Road. <clears throat> they're parking in the street. They don't have, for, they, <coughs> I'm the only one on the street that uses their garage. Oh no, the next door neighbor does, kind of. But I have a garage and it's used. There's two cars in the garage and I have two other cars for my children who are off the street. Make sure they're off the street. Yeah, yeah Reading's bylaw exactly requires yeah. off street parking. Right. Like, that's a requirement on every single exactly. accessory unit. Yeah. So I mean, they, it's a good one to look at. It's, it, it'll give you a lot of ideas, and it, um, there's some holes that could be plugged, but it's 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 a pretty thorough um, with graphics and everything section yeah. on it. That's a good. No, I definitely I think that's great. The the Reading bylaw is really thorough. I think that's a great one for us to, to start with. The one criticism I have heard of it is that it does allow for I guess the fence very special part, but it does allow for uh, the accessory building units to go into a detached accessory structure. And I was going to ask that question because based on our other conversations that we've had in the past, it seems to me that that might be a concern. But if it's something we would consider, I, I guess I would just pose the question to Jerry. When you're seeing issues, where are you mostly, like is there is there a place, is there a context where you would really not want to see them because you feel it would be more problematic, more dangerous? I mean, 
do you have an opinion on Mother Nation? No, that's a broad question. I really yes. it's, kind of, it's kind of hard to answer that. Uh, um, well, like a basement, with, you know, a basement if it doesn't have yeah. proper egress can be a dangerous situation. It's uh, like I, I have to look at everything through the building code. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if I see something that's um. If I see something that's, say, 10 feet away, it's, a, it's an accessory structure and it's 10 feet away from that particular house, or, or it's within 10 feet of that house, um, that doesn't work because now you have to have a one-hour fire rating on that accessory structure. You have to have a one-hour fire rating on that on the house structure. Right. Now, all of a sudden, that you have an accessory structure that is now, they, they just added this little bump out to their house. Now, the accessory structure is five feet away from their house. Well, you can't have a window on that side where that accessory structure is because now you have potential for a fire. So now you don't have a one hour fire rating. So now you have to have a two hour fire rating. Windows gotta come out. These are things I'm seeing all the time and I'm fighting with these people. I'm winning, but I'm fighting with them. And I'm trying to do it relative to life safety. My job is to protect the people and, and it's to protect the people from themselves. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, the fight, what is it, 20 feet property line? Is it the one hour? Is it 10 feet on property line? 10. So you get 10. Okay. Yeah. And that's regardless if there's another structure anywhere near it. If you're within 10 feet of your property line, that whole side needs to be one hour. So, yeah. and again, and people are going with just, you know, zip wall and, uh, and, and cedar shingles and thinking I'm good, and they're not good. You know, mm -hmm. they, get a, they have to get it rated. Yeah. And but that's just, part of the code, and, and that's where I think you have the teeth because that's code. And, and, and their lack of knowledge on the code is not your fault. And if they involve either a designer or they're versed in the code, they should know moving that close to the property line is uh, going to... A lot of those designers are a little sketchy, but... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, but I mean, what I'm saying is that at least, that those items are truly under your you know, police powers, whereas this other stuff, as you mentioned, is, it's out of your hands and you can't infer and all this stuff, yeah. so it, it puts you in a bad position so not having a bylaw. Hopefully that kind of answers, kind of sort of somewhat answers. Yeah, I think what we should do is, I think that I should collect a bunch of bylaws from other communities, take a look at them, um, start working on a draft of at least points that we want to include. And like I've already started some parameters, like for example, you know, whether or not to allow by a special permit, whether to allow in certain zoning districts or, um, you know, or everywhere by you know special permit, whether we do an overlay, um, detached or 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 don't allow it in detached, um, things like that. So I think that we can start working on that, and then that will at least maybe give Jerry something to respond to. Like, okay, this seems acceptable, or this seems like it can introduce new problems. Um, and then I did want to bring up one other issue, which I I heard people talking about it before, and I, I have a feeling we're not going to be able to control over it. The concern that in law apartments truly are for family, and I don't think that that's something we have any ability to regulate. And I don't know if that's is that is do you know if that's correct? Because if you have an accessory dwelling unit, I mean, I don't think we're allowed to check whether people are. I don't think you are. No, I got, I just I can't. I just can't go in there and just. Yeah. The only thing and you're allowed to do, or via by bylaws, is the rule like Reading and other towns have, which is the owner, an owner, a n, an owner needs to be. You know, living in one of the dwelling, either the ADU or the primary, yeah. that's one of the rules. But yeah, I think that we can do. See, I just, I don't want to promise people that these are in-law apartments, but we have no ability to. Right. You know. And that was one of the reasons why a lot of the attorneys were calling me. They were saying, wait a minute here, um, you can't do this because KP Law, what they did is they had language in, in the deed restrictions saying that um, after 48 hour notice, I have the right to go into that unit and perform an inspection. And that was basically attached to their deed. That's just. That's a yeah. little onerous, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. that's wrong. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a, you know, you got to think of who wrote it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Jerry, you you uh, so do you? Want, I, I know you came here originally to talk about uh, some modifications of the bylaw. Do you, do you still want to do something with that while we work our way through this EDU thing? No, if you could just. This is more of a discussion type thing, and if we can bring something to town meeting at, at some point in time, that would be great. Well, we've been talking about it for a long time now. With we should awesome be able to push this through pretty quick. Yeah, and I think we need to do something about it because it's really, uh, I don't know, I just get, uh, 
I get antsy. Is there anything Mr. Chairman we can do to help him though in the three four months before town meeting? Just to it sounds like he's got a, sounds like he's done a pretty good job of working the whole damn thing out himself. Yeah. So. <laughs> I like so, all uh, the research you've done. I don't know. I don't want to damage anything he's yeah. done. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm asking you, I guess, because I don't know the, what ability we have to quickly pass. Well, basically, he probably would have a couple suggestions us. about yeah, some bodies getting written. Well, that's what I mean, but that's a more comprehensive bylaw. I just mean, is there anything short term that helps Jerry? Well, that's, that's kind of what I asked him. So, so uh, yeah, and that's what he's basically saying, and it's. It's kind of difficult to answer. I'm doing everything right now that I can in my power short term. And that's relative to the deed, the deed restrictions. Mm -hmm. And my inspector is out there, uh, Inspector Anzalone, he's just he's doing an, an amazing job. And he's just going after these, not going after them, but he's just policing it. Yeah. Bringing it to my attention, and here I go on a letter writing campaign. It's just not enough hours in a day, and I think we all feel the same way. Right. Yeah, you can't be changed. The Board of Health is probably a good ally for you, but, uh, but they don't have much time. Well, I, so. I think, if I may, um, we should be able to get something done by, at a minimum, June time meeting. I don't know if we could do it earlier. It's kind of that push for October. It's only like two months. That's only a month, right? That's going to be I difficult. Think we can try. Yeah, that's that's going to. I think it yeah. might be nice to. Well, we might be able to get something written. I'm sure by then, but it would be nice to be able to have a couple of public meetings. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Right. So that's yeah, what you can't June, June is a good, a good shooting. You know, a good place to shoot. So yeah. that said, that's a year away. So how do we help Jerry for a whole year? Where well, well, that's what I, I was asking. Is there anything we can do to help him? You can't do anything. You can't do anything. Yeah. He has to continue doing what he's doing. Yes. Yeah. If we get a bylaw in place, now he's got something to hang his hat on. Right. So, so now that we've uh, kind of, I don't want to belabor it, but uh, uh, I have one more thing I want to discuss. Yeah. It's pools. <laughs> oh, yeah. All oh, the fence around pools and fences. Yeah, the fence. I'm very frustrated at the fact that I have people, the, 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 the state building code and the they board of building regulators basically said to me, Jerry, you don't have the right to tell them to put a fence around their pool. If, if they have an automatic pool cover. Well, it basically says um, in the exceptions for pools, spas and hot tubs with lockable safety covers that comply with ASTM F1346, one, one th uh, 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 section two, swimming pools with a power safety cover that complies with ASTM, same thing. Um, what it's basically telling us is if they have a power cover, you don't need a fence around around your pool because you have a power cover. So I said to the, my question to the state was, okay, you lose power, Which, is there any redundancy here? Well, can you define redundancy? Yeah, backup power. Oh, geez, we didn't even think of that. Yeah, of course you didn't think of that. And okay. who closes the cover? Excuse me? And who closes the cover? Correct, all of a sudden, uh, Rich has to run on the house real quick, and he has to dot in there, and there's nobody around. Somebody comes running on, on his property. They're in the pool. That's an issue. There's been 26 deaths already this year. No. Drownings. <coughs> Drownings. Lakes and pools. Um, the latest one was a one-year-old. At a party. Yeah. At a party, yeah. It's, and there were people out at the de on the pool deck. It's, and it Jerry, the, co the code is on the fence. It's a lockable <coughs> gate, whereas on the cover, there's no lockable. There's just you could just not use your cover that day. I mean, so it, it's yeah, a weird, it's a weird gap in the code. Get under that cover, and you wouldn't even know it. Yeah, it's just a weird gap in the code. There's no way that you can right. assure. Like the gate has to have a spring hinge or an automatic lock on right. it if it's going to be code, and that means there's a good chance it'll be locked when the one-year-old comes up to it and he hicks on the fence. Whereas the cover, if you forget to motorize or, or manually pull your cover across. You get an open pool there with no fence. It's cr I think it's crazy. Uh, yeah. Well, the water building regulator, regulators told me there's going to be a, there's going to come a time where it's going to be handed down through whomever. It could be the attorney general's office, whatever. You need to comply with this. I just want to make sure we have modifications within our bylaws that say you need a fence either way. So, yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah. so we, we can could, do that. We can write it into a bylaw that has a fence. Write it some foot fence. Automatic closing. Mandatory. Yeah, as a mandatory item. Yeah. It, and, 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 it, and it has to be written up within a way, and of course we're going to have our legal department. I, got, I, have to look at it. I have a question. 
And this is because I actually ran into one of these at a house that I had to go repair a window at. They had a nice fence around, couldn't get into it, unless you were in the house. Because then you could walk out of the house and walk right into the pool. You have to have an alarm in it. You have to have an alarm in that door. That door needs to be alarmed. Okay, that, and that's that's why I'm asking. What do we do for that kind of situation? An alarm door. Okay. Yep. The door has to be alarmed. Um, the the fence has to have an automatic closing gate. It also has to have a plunger, 54 inches in height at the right. top. Um, your fence has to be all the way down to the ground. Um, you you can't have large spacing, two inch spacing. It's it's just it's. It's pretty simple. Um, it's all about life safety. It's protecting, protecting our children, protecting our future. No, no, I heard you've had trouble with that, and, and that's ridiculous, especially yeah. with what's been going on now. Well, I basically, I, I got um, Mike Murphy involved. Um, I even got legal counsel involved, and the guy finally was just, okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. And it, I shouldn't have to work four or five hours for that one issue hmm. when it can be put right in our zoning bylaws saying mandatory period. Yeah. Um, can we do just a very simple zoning yeah. bylaw for October that says that any, and we can list a bunch of things, and we can, while we're at it, include some of these detention ponds that we have to put in all our subdivisions now. Anything <laughs> that has an X amount of, you know, whatever the amount is of water has to have, you know, a four foot fence and have all of it. Can we, can we do that? As the pool bylaw? code says National Pool Code says anything 24 inches of water or more mm -hmm. has to have a fence around. Okay. There's your, there's your answer. Is it, are we able to, so if we put a zoning bylaw together, do you know if that will be a problem if it's different from what the state building code? That's, we do it? that's the problem. That's the issue. That's where we have to get guidance because okay. we need to make a modification to this to, to modify it so it fits regardless. Well, generally on the home rule, we're allowed to make a law that's more restrictive but not less strict than the state Correct. law. Correct. So, so that's, that, I don't think this is a problem. I think this is doable. We just want to, we just, so like I said, we could probably, it's probably another one of those that we could pick up from another community, right. modify it, or, or just even get, the state code, the, modify the it. Code from Jerry. Yeah. Uh, Jerry, could you share that with her, the national group code? Maybe. Okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Is that small enough that we, like yeah. get it through in October. This yeah. is this will yeah. be the time it with all these these right. issues that have been going yeah. on. But those are the major issues I have right now. That I I, yeah. I mean I have a lot of other uh, smaller ones, but I think it's basically um, I know everybody want, doesn't want to hear this, but I think it's a re recodification of our zoning bylaws. I don't know if anybody else agrees with that. Um, well, Danielle does. Okay, because uh, our it just well. I don't, I don't want to say I really think, but... <laughs> yeah, some of it's a little old-fashioned. Correct, yeah. yeah. And it, it, as, it lack of a better word, wishy-washy, it's all over the place. It hasn't yeah. kept up with the times. Yeah. yeah. I can go one area, it says, in one area it says yes, and the other area it says no. Yeah. What? We need to fix that. that. Yeah. Um, this, there's a lot, of, a lot of room for interpretation, but the interpretation is only by me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Okay, well, I think we can, uh, we can take care of some of those, but we'll, let's start with these. And then um, and if you have another one that becomes a problem, let us know, and we'll just start working on it. Well, I appreciate you all listening to me. I yeah. really do. Thanks for coming. No, I, I think you're, you know, again, this is about life safety. You know, you're, you know why, why would anybody, you're trying to protect the kids and the life of the people. You know, why would anybody, I think the pool one's a slam dunk at town meeting. Yeah, exactly. So I, I we think don't have to work we'll, we'll get that now. one for you, no problem. The ADU thing is going to be a little trickier because we're going to have to modify it a little to make to, to keep the people in the higher rent district happy. Yeah. But, yeah. but um, yeah, that that needs that needs some that needs some work with the public. Yeah. yeah, and that's the other reason why I don't think it's good to try to get it to October mm -hmm. right now is because you need to sell this. Yeah, and it's going to take you a little while. Yeah. You're going to have to sell it, and so you're going to have to have a couple of public hearings, that, that, as Danielle said, and you're going to take some input, and then we're going to. We'll, uh, and then we'll work on what we finally come up with for one based on the input that we get. It'll also give us a feeling for whether how it's going to do the town meeting and what we need to do to sell it. So, <coughs> Great. I think mean, I mean, that's, how, that's how we go about this. So, okay? Good. Thank you, Jerry. Thanks, Jerry. Oh, thank, thank you. Once again, thank you all for listening. And
for having me here. I appreciate it. Yep. No, we're going to uh, we're we're kind of work on these right now. Excuse me. Thanks. What you said. <laughs> no, I, I said I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, what, that's why I left the room. You know. I had to go get my my wife dropped off my uh, electronic devices for my ears. Yeah, I could use one for my right ear, but I don't. <laughs> so, well, thank you very much okay. once again. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Okay, here, thanks. Okay, um, I just, uh, so Warren, the uh, 200 River Park, yeah, okay. they did not add the extra uh, handicap parking place on uh -oh. the plans. We'll tell them to do it, let's do it next time. I, I, and I look back in the minutes, they yeah, do, right. I, I, I just wanted to make sure that it was reported in the minutes that we had actually accepted. So they get the four. They get the four in the front and the one in the back. And I had asked for another one because they had a, a set of four parking spaces there. Yeah. With with the. Uh, where the ramp was. Yeah, the ramp was in, in the area where um, you used to get out if you have a wheelchair. Right. You know, the right. extra space. Right. Which the next car could use to get in okay. to wheel up. So they, right. they didn't add it. So we're gonna tell them they're not gonna load on it. Yeah, we'll just have them fix that and we'll do it. Yeah. Um, and actually, nobody is ready for their plan endorsements because um, we haven't received the updated items from the other two. So. so basically, we have to accept, we have to release the check the session. Yes. Yeah. That's right. I had forgotten they existed, but Debbie reminded me that it's. Those are, those are old. They are really old. From 2015. Yeah. You and I are the only ones left. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't know, I started as the, as the chair, and you finished as the chair. <laughs> well, that happened. Maybe I was just the chair that night, he was in here. Uh, <clears throat> I actually read this, I was interested in reading through those again. I don't know, I can't remember if it's in August. Oh, you, came, you came in late, right? But and then you signed off on it. Yeah. But Debbie had me as the as the chairman and Bill as okay, the vice chair. Okay. Yeah. Pat, Pat and I showed up. A little bit. Yeah. I think we can get out of here soon. I actually missed this. Yo. She's pretty good. Yeah. She was, she was very good. Yeah, yeah. She was very good. She kept us all on an even keel. She did. She did. <laughs> she did. She did a good job with that. Okay, um, you, uh, you have a, uh, a motion there? For the nine executive session? Yeah, the executive session. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I move the Planning Commission vote to release the executive session minutes of August 25th, 2015. Second. Any motion and second for the further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The record record show it's aye in favor, no opposed. We have all five people here tonight. This is just We're all here tonight. Else. <laughs> and you don't have to call roll call because we're all here. Yeah. <laughs> I did put this into the um, share file. Oh, Thank you. Uh, on yeah. So the only thing we really have left is that we need the liaison, right? Right. <coughs> Pick your poison. Well, I've already got the, what you want to do on finance. I mean, you know. Oh, I guess I'll be on the EDC, what do you think? Yeah, I, I don't mind being fine. Off on that one. Can you guys let me know when you decide who's going to do what? Okay, okay. So, um, Jeremiah and Ryan, uh, I noticed uh, uh, Ryan, you have recreation, which is good for you to have. So, um, anything else? Housing partnership. Do one of you guys want to take on that? Do which one? Housing partnership. It's inactive right now, I think, but yeah. we, well, I mean, we should have someone. It's <laughs> the Metropolitan <laughs> Area uh, Commission. That one's still active, right? Which one is? Yeah, the 4th of July Committee is inactive. Metropolitan Area uh, Planning Commission. Wastewater Advisory Committee is inactive. Oh, I, 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 I,
I mean, I go to those, so whoever right, but, is the liaison doesn't have to do anything. Yeah. All right, who wants to be a liaison to that? Because that's an easy one. What? I, the MAPC, because I, um, I attend all their meetings, so whoever is the liaison doesn't have to do anything. Yeah, because Joe's the liaison <laughs> now. And Bill's well, not. Basically, everything that Bill evaluates did, it needs to be picked up, probably. Right. And John Cody as well. And John, yeah, John Cody. Cody. Right, right, right. <laughs> Wait, you just said you were going to be fine. Same thing you liked, eh, Jeremiah? Warren's going to be fine. Well, I'll accept I'm a low man on the totem pole here, so whatever's left over. No, 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 uh, no I'd rather you pick something that you're well, actually you interested in, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you're not interested in any of it, that's fine too, but I mean, but if there's something... I mean, obviously some of it I don't even know exactly what they do, so yeah. uh, I'm not sure what a JT Berry committee does, for example. Oh, that was, that was defunct. <laughs> that was defunct too. Should I take those off? Yeah, yeah so, well. so let's, uh, so maybe this will help if we, if we go through and... Mr. Chairman, I'd like to do ZBA if that's uh, no one, you know, obviously. No, that's great. That's so great. Okay, so, so let me just run down these real quick and yep. tell you, to get an idea. <coughs> I don't think there's a 4th of July committee anymore. So if it comes back, I'll go back on it. But right now, uh, there's nothing. JT Berry committee, I think that's gone. Yeah, that's gone. The um, housing partnership is, is mothballed at the moment, right? Daniel? I don't think they have met. Uh, they're, they're not an active committee right now. Yeah. So the Wastewater Advisory Committee, um, that's morphed into something different now. So that's kind of not there anymore. Mm -hmm. Isn't there work with the now? I'm sorry? Isn't there a wastewater something or other? There is, and I think Warren is. You guys voted to make I, Warren last year sometime, but they I, haven't I think started. It's just me and Mark Clark. <laughs> okay. Well, they, they, they've appointed people, but I don't think. They haven't actually taken any steps to meet yet. Okay, so leave, yeah. leave it there then. Yeah. Uh, the wastewater I'll keep it. I'll keep it. Yeah. <coughs> the, I know a little about it, so. There is no school building committee anymore, I don't believe. Is there? School that's a secondary they element. They do still meet. Do they? Yeah. They but it's. Just reorganized, I believe. Okay. That the, the, the school, uh, building committee? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. sorry. No, I was at the selectable meeting last Yeah, I think it's a wrap, right? They said this is kind of like the. Oh, is that what they said? Yeah, they're doing it. I mean, they're doing it, but it's kind of like it's only it's only because of the litigation. Little, little litigation stuff, right? I think there's a few other little things, but it's really like they were all like, "This is the end of this, <coughs> this is the last time." So having a, having having a uh, representative there is kind of silly. Yeah, I think so. We should have been on the committee for that. Okay, was, that so was uh, I'm going to take that I'm going to take <laughs> that off our list because I'm going to yeah, give yeah, it. Yeah, I think that's that's kind of start getting that, too, right? Yeah. 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 So uh, thank you for playing fun. Was that? Thank you for playing. Yeah, no, no, you're right. Yeah, you reminded me. So, um, the school, school committee. You're going to take EDC, right? I'll take, yeah, I'm on it. Might as well. Yeah. <coughs> Unless someone else wants to become that, I can go associate with it. Yeah, no. Nobody's, nobody's okay, joking up to me. Yeah, yeah, so I guess. Uh, okay, <laughs> so, so Housing uh, Partnership Committee. You said the kind of ball? They haven't met. Um, I don't know if there's anyone on it right now. So, yes, I. Yes. <laughs> Jeremiah, why don't you take that housing partnership committee and we'll see sure. uh, if they become active again, we'll, we'll let you know and let you sure. go. Because that's, that's, you know, that's actually pretty interesting trying to get land and get housing and stuff like that. So it's actually there's some learning you'll do in, in, that, in that particular thing, I think. So, yeah, that sounds good. Okay, yeah, so I think that'll be a good one for you to check, so. Uh -uh. Or well, you could pick up main pack too. You just get input from Danielle. Yeah, I go to their meetings, so if, you know, you wouldn't have to go. I mean, you certainly can if you want to, but yeah. it's, it's an interesting yeah. chance to hear what's going on in other communities. Yeah. Actually, I, my only uh, thing is that I was thinking that this MAPC may go in for Dave. Which one? MAPC, best going area planning council. Yeah, sure, put me down there. <coughs> because because of that, <coughs> you have a lot of knowledge in a lot of these things, Dave. So I think it'll be something that where, if necessary, you can contribute, but also you could bring it back if necessary. But again, Danielle goes to all the meetings and so forth. But um, still, well, Carlos station. loved me. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> well, that's just Carlos. an inside joke, for me and Danielle. <laughs> 
something with conservation. We'll kiss him. He's not our coordinator. No, I'm just like kidding. Like our sub-region coordinator. And uh, I'll just say, this is a question. I don't want to miss it. Oh, yeah. Ryan, yeah, we'll we'll do you want to take LUC because that's kind of uh, connected to your recreation? With well, utilization? Sure. Yeah. Okay. All school committee. Um, if nobody wants it, I'll take school. I'll take it. I've worked with them a lot in the past. They've been pretty good. So. In con, in con, um, somebody do that. So I'll take conservation too, I don't mind that. Just don't hold it, uh, burn yourself yeah. Well, I'm not, because I got rid of it. I had most of my stuff. Well, I'm I'm to fun committees. <laughs> you don't lift them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <coughs> I think you got five right now. No, I don't. I got three. No, you got four. Four. Oh yeah, wastewater. Sorry. Wastewater. Yeah, yeah. That is right. an actual committee. Four. Yeah. Okay. And at some point, it's going to get going. That's fine. Yeah. Oh wait a minute. That one, two, three. Well, we have five. If you leave on the wastewater. Uh, <coughs> you're you're on the select board. I got board of selectmen. Yeah. Conservation. Yeah. Um, finance. Oh yeah. Finance. <laughs> and wastewater. All right. You took that. <laughs> huh? You took that. Finance. Yeah, finance. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind. I don't want the finance committee for my church, so. <laughs> it's just money. Because I'm going some experience. So. All right, so that took care of everything, right? We're all good? Yeah, that's all good. Are we okay? Do we have a uh, database of when these committees meet? Uh, schedules? Yeah, that would help. <laughs> or contacts or anything besides like this list? We, we, we kind of don't, but the, the town clerk page does. I think that everything is, we, she actually does have a database, but the calendar, if you look at just like a month's calendar, they'll all be, they'll all be listed. Okay. In fact, some of these boards and committees don't have their own web page, really, or they do, but there's no information on it. So the right. calendar is probably the best way okay. to do it. So we have a list so of like the chairs to like reach out and like contact people? I literally yeah. just wrote, I just, when I have liaisons, I have a bunch of, I just write from the tell them I'm your liaison, put me on your yeah. CC list and people do oh, that. Yeah, I, just, I was just going to say that too. Yeah, I was going to ask you. But I also <laughs> check the calendar every week to see what's going yeah, on. Yeah, okay. most of the stuff is on it and it tells you if it's virtual or not. Yeah. But I just literally write them and say I'm your liaison, you know, just include me on all your communication. Yeah, no, Gen no Vincenzo tonight. What's up? No Vincenzo tonight. Oh yeah, he wasn't uh, sure he could make it tonight. Yeah. Yeah. But see, he, he was, uh, did he never miss the Zoom? Yeah. There was a secondary school building committee meeting tonight at 6 o'clock. Oh. Well, if they meet when we meet, then no one's going to go come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that'll be okay, interesting. Well, now you see who's at 7. You all set? I think so. Nice. Two I whole know. weeks. Two weeks. That's well, nice. I haven't seen my family in a year. So well, good for you. Oh, wow. Where are you going? I'm going. Okay. Yeah, so that's great. Right, right down the Cape to go. Uh, actually, this year we're going to East Ham. East Ham? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I like it up there. It's fun. Yeah. Not as crowded. So, that'll be good. Um, I'll be in. Um, and I'll be in the rest of the week. And then I did just briefly want to bring up our July 20th meeting. Currently, we don't have anything on the agenda, but have it on the calendar. Um, we'll be in touch, Debbie and I, um, probably like 
I'll, I'll give her a call maybe a week before before I'm back because if there's you know things come in, we won't be able to do any public hearings because they would have needed to come in already. So it would just be things like A and R's or other discussion topics. Well, we might also one of the things we might do at that meeting is if is if we want to get a printout of the uh, of the um, Reading uh, ABUR and everything. So yeah. and we'll just kind of. So we'll just kind of look, look, look at through them. and talk about it a little bit. Yeah, that's a good Start idea. to brainstorm on it. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. If, we have to be, if we don't, if nothing else comes in from the meeting, we'll move that off to the next one. Okay, okay. But that, but if, 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 if it's a quiet meeting, we only got a couple of things. So what you were talking about, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go to chapter five or section Stephen Reading five. ABU. Okay. Oh, first yeah. 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 But we'll be in touch about whether anything else comes in. I think it's probably doing good, but I'm sure. Just my oh, yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah.